Hello and welcome to the press conference for the 2023 season of Monster Energy AMA Supercross. This is round eight, the Daytona round, and of course, round eight of the 31 round series, the Super Motocross World Championship. We have our 450 podium up here, another incredible race here at Daytona. Would we expect nothing less? Eli Tomac once again wins here in Daytona. Cooper Webb in second, Chase Sexton in third place. I'm going to start with uh, Eli Tomac, uh, another record set on your own, right behind Bubba. 49 wins in Supercross, an incredible, incredible run that you've had, and especially here in Daytona. This makes seven Daytona wins. No one's ever done anything like that. I think in NASCAR, uh, we have Richard Petty, who has seven wins, so you are in rare air, and I just want to ask how that feels to get another win, and especially how you felt on that track, tracking it down. Well, I mean, I guess the best way to put it is it, it just feels like home to me. Um, you know, I, I practice on a on a pretty loose soil. Um, I mean, it's it's not that sandy, but it's it's somewhat close, and that's the only thing I can really put it to is is I literally just feel like home on this at this place. So um, earlier in the day, though, I will say I was I, w I was a little bit wonder or I was wondering what the heck was going on. You know, I was well off of a second during practice and and struggling just to find some general flow. But uh, I don't know. Once the lights came on, I was a whole different dude, and um, yeah, obviously went at went at it there with Cooper. Um, you know, back and forth there, and uh, it was a gnarly battle once again, you, you know, down to the wire. <clears throat> Excellent battle by everyone up here on the podium. All right, we're going to open up to the media here who is present, and uh, let's go dark side. Jamie Guida. Uh, Jamie, Vital MX. Coop, I'm going to start with you. Um, we talked in the past about trying to start strong. You did that tonight. I think you may, you may be hit neutral. I'm not sure what happened when Eli got by you, but um, starting strong work, just kind of, you've been working on things to do that. Uh, no doubt. You know, I think uh, that's, that's you know, the last few where I've struggled. So you got a good start, which was great, and tried to put some good laps down. And um, ironically enough, you know, we were kind of doing some different lines, and I was trying to blitz the whoops, and, and he had that inside. And I feel like the blitzing was maybe a little faster, but I left myself open. And then uh, some of our lines in the sand switched and switched back. So... It was tough, man. It's 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 a obviously a gnarly track, but then you're also trying to find the fast lines. They change easily, and um, yeah, you know, I made that mistake. Yeah, somehow clicked neutral and um, kind of allowed that to you know get, he got by me. But I tugged right in behind him, and I felt like I stayed stayed right there on him, just really hoping for a mistake. And like I said, I was trying other lines in the switchback and the sand, kind of just. But we were we were going for it, and uh, I think we left it all out there for sure. But yeah, it was great. Led led a lot of laps, and um, you know he passed me there in the sand, and then I got him right back, and then you know we we bumped going both to that inside. But uh, like I said, overall I'm I'm not stoked for a second, but I gave it my best. Uh, Chase, with the couple of mistakes that you made that were costly on time, it kind of felt like. You, after your mistakes, you drifted one way or the other and got into Barsha, but it was hard to see from where I was standing. From your perspective, how did those two incidences go down? Um, yeah, I uh, made that mistake after the t or under the tunnel, and then I just heard him to the, my right, but I was in front, so I feel like I had the line. Obviously, I can go back and watch, and uh, him and he came over after the race and talked to me about it. So, um, yeah, I just go back and look at it, but I felt like I had – front wheel in front and I had control so um yeah those mistakes were unfortunate and a lot of them get close uh Jason for Ace Rex um Eli um the ebb and flow between you and Cooper you'd both have good laps bad laps is that just lines is there certain times where you're pushing where you're waiting for the track to come to you what led to such a dynamic race back and forth like that it was that it was just the lines developing in different ways um you know at first like in the sand it was it was definitely all it favored inside to outside basically the whole time and then um somewhere in the middle there i just decided to go inside right i'm like i, I gotta change something right now and it and it obviously worked uh for for whatever like 50 feet till he went slingshot shotting back by me there um and then and then that was it and, and i just stuck to the the jumping line too in the whoops um i went for it just to to try to save energy um, because this, this track will wear you down. So uh, between the, the sand and, and the jumping, you know, I felt like, you know, those were the spots where um, it was just important to, uh, you know, hit, hit the right way every single lap. And how much, uh, the last two years have been close between you two, how much has this really just come down to just will and heart and digging deep and all that in the last couple minutes? I, I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. And, um, you know, the, when we had that little jump up on the shelf, I, 
I probably actually shouldn't went shouldn't went for that for that jump to the inside there. So um, that was a little bit squirrely, a little bit sketchy. But uh, like I said, you know, we we both obviously you know just leave it all out on the track. <clears throat> Please. Uh, this question is for Cooper. Um, definitely, uh, the tracks of Florida, um, you get advantage. You feel very comfortable. Uh, so the rest of the, of the races of the year, um, how do you feel in the future on those tracks? Uh, definitely, Florida is, is advantage for you. You have some type of thinkings about that. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think all of them, you know, are suit me well. You know, there's there's certain places that are better than others. I think. Yeah, Daytona has always been good to me. Uh, I've been on the podium every time I raced, and uh, I've been close twice now. So, uh, yeah, it's it's nice just, I think, sleeping in our own bed. You know, I drove up, and just a good weekend. But, uh, yeah, moving forward, I think, you know, I really like Indy, Detroit, the Seattle rounds, um, Salt Lake. So, yeah, obviously a lot of good rounds coming up. And um, but, but, yeah, I guess it's nice just to race where I live now in Florida. Uh, we'll get a microphone for you real quick. Pass it over. Unless there's another. We got one coming, and then we'll give one to Dan Beaver, maybe. This is Melissa Thomas with Florida National News. This question is for, for all of you up there. But kind of talk about, obviously, the plot thickens when it rains. Obviously, when you're dealing with, with a course like that. But is there any switch in your strategy once that happens, particularly here in Daytona? Because... Ricky Carmichael's courses are always insane here. So kind of talk about your experience with that. Um, for me, I, I went to um, roll-offs just to, just to not chance anything because, um, you know, obviously it's hard to see what's going on uh, with the rain. So um, that's the main thing I, I think about is, is what you're going to do with, with your vision once it starts raining. And then uh, I guess luckily for us, you know, it didn't do much during the actual race. Yeah, same. I think it's it's tough. This this track in general is already a little hard to see with the black dirt and being at night. So I was tearing a lot of tear offs at first, uh, kind of, you know, counting them in my head how many I had. And um, but then, like I said, it stopped raining. But Eli, I saw did the roll off and um, I was like, man, questioning it at first. But then luckily it stopped. Yeah, I just <clears throat> you were wondering if you're going to run tear offs or roll offs. And I stuck with the tear offs. And like Cooper said, I'm I'm really because you can pull seven at a time if you aren't careful. So I was trying to pick one off at a time and not, not waste any. And for there, I think it started raining a little bit during our race, but we got lucky. So thankfully the rain held off for the most part. Dan. For Eli, um, at one, you said that you got better as the night went along. At what point did you know that you had the win? And during the race, did you ever give yourself the opportunity to think about what <clears throat> the history of that meant well i mean with with both these guys up here i don't i don't count the wind till i cross the finish line i i got pretty sketchy on the side of the tunnel with maybe five laps to go or somewhere in there so i mean i was in the lead at that point but almost made a mistake so um that that's it man it's just like you you got to cross that finish line before you start counting any any wins <clears throat> And for all three of you, th I think this is the third race in a row that you've sat on the podium together the fourth time, fourth time overall. What does that mean to each of you guys to have this tight a competition at this point? Um, I think it's, <clears throat> it's cool to have these two next to me. Um, obviously, we, all of us want to be where Eli is, and that's our goal during the weeks. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be on the podium, but we all, we all want to win. Yeah, I mean, I surely wish it wasn't us three. I wish it was just a solo, but uh, no, nah, it's good competition for sure. And uh, we each have our strengths, and I think we're elevating, you know, Supercross at the moment. So uh, I'm sure we'll all look back in 10 years and relish it, but right now it's uh, it's every man for themselves. Yeah, I mean, you can see, uh, you know, I think uh, right right now us three are, are, are separating ourselves, um, you know, to a, to a certain degree. So um, I guess you... But, you know, we'll, we'll probably expect to see this again. <clears throat> Grace from Speedsport. Thank you. Uh, Grace from Speedsport. This one is for Eli. Eli, can you just take me through the pass um, that you made on Cooper for the lead? Obviously, you guys were going down the front stretch. It was kind of right in front of the crowd, so the crowd was super loud. So can you just take me through that pass in that moment? 
Yep, it was right after the finish line there, and and you know it was um, it was just a thing where I, I believe he hit you know false neutral neutral. So um, and then I was able just to to slide on by and, and do the normal triple line. So um, there wasn't a whole lot of you know thought thought to it. I just happened to be uh, just to the right side of him, so it, I was able just to slide right by. <clears throat> So kind of how fun was it to see all those people and just celebrate your accomplishment with a crowd like that? It's neat, uh, you know, when the, when the fans can get right up against the, the podium there uh, with us because um, the other Supercrosses, you know, that doesn't happen. So, um, you know, you just, uh, you know, they're just right there. So you get to engage with the fans. It's, it's uh, pretty cool. Well, congrats. And thank you. Jamie. Uh, yeah, Jamie Vitalmex again. Uh, Chase, Eli's mentioned picking the jump line through the whoops a couple times. You started off in the – Skimming and then went to jumping. Skimming definitely looked faster. Was it for the same reason to conserve energy? Yeah, that and you just really were hung out to dry um, going outside and I had Justin behind me. So I definitely didn't want to leave myself open multiple times in a row. And the jump line, I actually, I messed it up for like the first three times I did it. And then I finally, I picked a rut outside of what the main one was and I started getting it good. And I think it was a little slower, but it was consistent, and you could replicate it every lap and not have to really not think, but it was just, yeah, more consistent and definitely saved a little bit of energy, and you could use that for the rest of the track. Uh, and, Eli, you talked about earlier in the day having a, a bit of a struggle, and well, I've seen, you know, the Twitter rumors, oh, there's, there's an injury, he's hiding, et cetera, but what about settings? You're pretty finicky with settings. This track is a little different than a normal Supercross track. Was that something you were struggling with? Did you change a lot? I, I did a little fork setting change between uh, the first and second um, time qualifier, um, but that was it. It was wasn't really anything major, and um, I don't I don't know. I I just uh, was was slow in a couple of spots on the track, I, and then I never put one really fast lap together. All right, Kevin Kelly. Yeah, Kevin Kelly, DMXS. I was uh, curious, you guys are going to race a few more of these Speedway-type events later on. Does this kind of help you in terms of getting ready for those events, in terms of settings? That's for all three of you guys because I'm really interested in how, how deep into a day you will chase settings before you go, all right, I'm stuck with this. I'm going to just run it. Uh, I think this one is nothing like Atlanta, um, but they are different for sure. I think you got to – have to make a few adjustments. I think the biggest difference is our speeds are a lot higher. Uh, that's what at least I noticed today. Like we're hitting all the obstacles at a much higher speed, especially these back straightaways. So um, it's hard. I mean, we actually didn't change anything really from normal. So for me, it was uh, another day. But I definitely think you got to make some adjustments, especially for maybe Atlanta. Yeah, it's uh, the Speedway tracks. This one is different than Atlanta. Atlanta's more just normal clay dirt. But I think they're cool because it just <clears> – <throat> you can be – you have to be very precise, but you can also um, gain a lot of speed and push through the rhythms if you're comfortable. So I feel like there's a lot of dirt. Everything feels bigger. Um, and I think especially Atlanta, everything – they just have more dirt, and the track is way busier. So I like them. Higher speeds. Um, here is just a different animal. When I In the heat race during the – we were second heat, and when you, the lights turn on, it's – I feel like it's kind of hard to see here a little bit, and then you finally adjust for the main event, and Atlanta's not as hard. But, um, yeah, I like the speedways and looking forward to uh, more of them. Yeah, it's it's good just to have them have something a little bit out of the ordinary for us. So I feel like the speedways are they're a good change-up you know, for us. <clears throat> cool. Every more out here? Are we good? Last chance. Going once, going twice. One more, let's hear it. Dan? Do you need a microphone? Yeah, we'll get you one, bud. Do you think that you guys learned anything at Daytona that will carry over into the three tracks on the SMX, or is it too soon to know? It, I mean, the, the, the unique thing about here is, is just the, the dark sand. So, I mean, yes, our mile per hour is up here, um, you know, which will be like the other speedways, but... Um, it's hard to replicate the soil, so I guess you don't know what you're going to get, uh, you know, at those at those other events um, outside of Atlanta. Dan, was that for everyone? Yeah. Okay. 
Coop. They gonna be supercross or motocross? We can ask the Mr. Phil, where's he at? <laughs> Bit of a mystery right now. Yeah, we don't really know what the tracks are really gonna be like, so it's uh, it's kind of a mystery at this point. Makes it exciting, <laughs> Jason. Yeah, Eli, um, every week you're breaking some sort of record or breaking your own record, whatever it is, and we want to ask you about it, but can you not even really wrap your head around that because it's so intense in the moment right now uh, where you can't really think about the large picture of your career? I, it's just, it's a cool spot to be in, and uh, yeah, man, yeah, man. I, don't, I don't got much to say. It's, 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 uh, it's pretty crazy to think uh, to be at 49, but, uh, you know, um, yeah, I don't got anything else to say. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Again, last chance. Anyone else? All right, excellent job. Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, and Chase Sexton. Well done, gentlemen. Ready to start now for the 250 class here for round eight in Daytona for the 2023 season of Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship and the 31 round season of the Super Motocross World Championship as well. We have Hunter Lawrence in first place, Max Anstey in second, Hayden Deegan in third. Excellent job to all three of you. A tough track, a brutal night. Well done. Hunter Lawrence, you are now half of a brother duo who have won Daytona. I believe no brothers have ever done that before. And much like uh, other records that are being set, are you proud of this? Yeah, I mean, I didn't know <laughs> no other brothers win. It's not something I, I think that's of. true. Dan Beaver could help me out with that. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I mean, it's cool. It's cool, obviously, you know. Uh, I mean, it's not really anything that we, we talk about with any venom in our words, but, you know, you always rub it in whenever we're joking lightly or something, you know, like if someone, you know, if Jed, it was triple crowns, but this year I missed out on a triple crown. So <laughs> now I was like, hey, maybe triple crowns aren't our thing. But uh, Symbiosis between you two yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, but it's just And all, both in first, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but it's cool. It's fun. Excellent. And Hayden, I want to ask you real quick, first podium for you. Um, it's a historic moment. Proud mother and father out here. They are beaming. They're very excited. Uh, a pretty big deal for your rookie season. I think this is your fourth race and you got a podium. That's incredible. How does that feel, bud? Uh, yeah, it's definitely super exciting. It was one of my goals. So we ticked off another one and uh, yeah, I got a taste of it and I definitely want more. <laughs> All right, excellent. And we'll go out to the media. Max will have plenty of time to talk. I know you're going to take it too, bud. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. Let's go. With <laughs> we, hey, we appreciate it. Trust me. We love it. Max has great answers. Yes, uh, he does. Jamie, Viola, Max. Hunter, I want to start with you. Uh, early pass on Nate Thrasher from where I was standing. Couldn't see if there was contact. May a little aggressive earlier or no? Uh, yeah, it depends how you look at it. You know, I was coming out. He went outside. I was inside. I'm getting roosted pretty bad, like the sand section roost is gnarly and then just kind of dove to the inside. Um, so, yeah, I didn't feel contact. Obviously, it's not like the ideal scenario, but you just kind of see a shot. You're making split decisions, you know, like on the spot. So, you know, sometimes you're going to make wrong decisions. Sometimes you don't, you know, and it was just I went to the inside, getting roosted. That was the, the option that presented itself. And, um, yeah, just kind of didn't look back. I kind of feel like... You know, look back at last week, whenever I'm in front, there's, you know, it's going to be a hard racing. So that's just what kind of comes with, with having the red plate. When you look back at previous, you know, years with guys that have had the same thing, it's it's part of it. Um, so, yeah, it, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, obviously it sucks that he went down. Not not what I wanted to happen. Hayden, you mentioned that this was a, uh, a goal. But after A2, before you decided to go pro, you kind of said you don't really know what to expect. You're just trying to learn. So I don't think it was a, a goal or even an expectation at that point. How do you feel about this trajectory of yours? Because it's, it's happening fast. Yeah, definitely happening fast. After Futures, I wasn't even sure if I was going to race. So uh, we pulled it, and we we're like, yeah, we wa might, might as well go race. So go get the experience. And uh, so far, it's been going great. And, uh, yeah, just keep on learning. Jason from Racer X. Um, Hayden, because your dad raced Supercross, I think a lot of people will think that he was pushing you into it, but explain the breakdown of how badly you wanted to do this as a career and how your mom and dad actually felt about it. Uh, yeah, my mom didn't want me to race dirt bikes after all my dad went through. So uh, we started, and my dad got me on a dirt bike. It was, kind of, it, it was gonna happen eventually, and uh, from there I just fell in love with it. Would always watch the guys outside do freestyle and stuff, so fell in love with dirt bikes, and uh, from there just been grinding to get start get up to this spot pretty much and race Supergrass. I've been wanting it for uh, my, uh, I couldn't say whole life because I'm only 17, but uh, that little span, so. And uh, now we're here, so we're just gonna yeah, keep getting better, hopefully. Yeah, so you would say this much more comes from you internally wanting to do this than people wanting you to do it. 
Yeah, it's it's a all me thing, you know. I want to. A lot of people. I mean, there's people like that obviously want me to do it. My dad wants me to do it, of course. That's just we're a racing family, so we want to keep that in the genes. And uh, but yeah, I want it bad. Dan Beaver, NBC Sports for Hayden. Can you even describe what emotion is like to get your first podium in this race, especially after hearing your name called so many times before the race as one of the favorites of the fans? Uh, yeah, this track is uh, not an easy one. You got to be a man to ride this track. So I didn't get the greatest start, but uh, I was able to make my way up to third. And uh, it's a tough track. You know, I was riding with good intensity. I felt great. And I was able, able to push through. And at the end, the crowd's amazing. It's, it's crazy. The crowd's going wild the whole time. So uh, when I finished that race, uh, adrenaline was going. I was super happy. Uh, Digan, uh, you almost near the record of being the youngest Supercross rider at 17 to be in the podium. Uh, Ron Lee Ching, 1983, did it. So do you ever thought in your mind that you, uh, after four races, you will be in the podium? Ever you think about that? Uh, yeah, it's definitely crazy. Uh, uh, this early, I didn't think it, honestly, I didn't think I'd be getting on the podium this early. But uh, it's racing, and uh, we continue to progress. So uh, we ended up getting on the podium. So now we're here, and uh, yeah, it's super exciting. Jamie Vital and Mexican. Uh, Max, you and I talked for a moment before you got up there, and you mentioned these results are a little better than what you th probably thought you were going to get, and you said you just need, now you need just a little bit more. What is that little bit more? What is it going to take? What do you got to find? Well, that's a tough one. Um, but, it, I mean, yeah, the expe expectations coming in, um, we didn't really know, and, and, and that quickly changed, you know, banging out a couple of podiums. Um, but I'm still learning a lot. You, you know, last week in, in Arlington, man, I was thrown off guard with a few things. And, and by the end of the night, I found a good setup. And I was like, man, if I could redo this day tomorrow, I'd be much better off. And, and it was the same today. I'm, I'm glad I got pressed yesterday because every time out on the track, I was, I was changing stuff. Um, and, and by all means, the team are doing an amazing job because they're trying to make my bike faster so that I can uh, I can compete against these these two boys uh, bike and and they're all trying to work. I've got Mike Hayes factory connection. Manny's a magician with the bike. We've been, f I, you know, everyone's telling me, oh, don't change the bike. You're getting on the podium, and I'm like, yeah, but they think they can make it better. We we want to try and uh, improve and and you know try and close that gap up to uh, to Hunter up front and. Um, Again, if I could redo the day tomorrow, I would start with what I finished in the main and, and be much better off because every session out there I was, um, yeah, searching for things. But I don't get paid for the heat races. I don't get paid for practice. I get paid for main events. So happy to be on the box. <laughs> uh, Hunter, with this, again, this somewhat hybrid style super cross track, big changes to the bike to make it better day. What'd you change? Uh, we went one click um, stiffer on the shock, which I thought would be a rebound call just because of the... High speed rhythm lanes, you know, you're hitting them at a lot faster, but no, honestly not. Um, I feel like the past few years, you know, just from leaning on the team's experience, they go, oh, you know, we do come to Florida, we do the whole Daytona test, and then we come to the race and we end up racing on our normal stuff. So it's cool when you can just trust in your in your setup and you're not like trying to reinvent the wheel because oh, it, it feels like bad or whatever. So no, the bike was great. We didn't really change anything. Um, just some mapping stuff throughout the day for the humidity, but all good. Hi guys, Brock Bridges, Supercross Stats. 600, 250 class race. Congratulations guys for uh, being on the podium for that. Hayden, halfway to your dad's podium total. Are you gonna uh, give him some heck next week when you uh, break it? <laughs> Oh, shoot. Yeah, my dad's definitely, uh, he's got that over me. He's got the win and the ghost ride. So uh, these guys are some some fast dudes in front of me, and uh, I'm not through their pace yet. So we got to keep working, and uh, hopefully yes, my, my dad's still beating me with that goal. So uh, we're just going to, you know, keep pinning work, and maybe we'll get up to their speed. Who knows? But they're going fast right now. So if I can do that, though, I'll be super excited. Hunter, there's only four guys now with more wins on a Honda in the 250 class than you. Um uh, does that feel pretty good to be one of the top all-time riders on that red machine? And what does that mean to your uh, to HRC? Uh, hopefully pretty good. I mean, I didn't know that stat you just fired off. I didn't know Brian had two podiums either. So uh, I think uh, I think he's going to have your record here pretty soon. <laughs> Sorry to say, but 
Um, <clears throat> no, I mean, dude, I, I don't know. I could care less. Like, I just want to be the best version of me <clears throat> when I ride and <clears> – <throat> Pardon me. And, uh, yeah, do well for the team. Obviously, you know, they're stoked and happy. Chet's doing well on the other coast. So it's, uh, it's a cool time right now. Uh, Max Hansty, um, you feel you, – you, you see – I see you, you feel so comfortable with 250. Do you think in the future uh, – what do you think about co uh, going again to 450 or doing like a combination, 250 Supercross and 450 Motocross? What do you think about that? I'm Supercross only. Um, <laughs> don't know if I should say this, but I went 5.5 five at, at Southwick last year and got 1,500 bucks. <laughs> and, and, man, that was a hard race. I'm much better off racing Supercross. I'm racing World Supercross, Australian Supercross, and US Supercross, and uh, I'm uh, I'm happy with that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm milking this 250 class as long as I can, and then I'll go 450 when I get kicked out. That's uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, I I like it. I like getting on the podium. I like them bonus checks. So that's that's yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Hey, I've noticed um, you've got a lot of fast teammates on your team. Plus, you've got uh, Martin on another Yamaha. And it seems like you've been uh, rubbing elbows with those guys quite a bit. Coming out on top more often than not, how's, how's that feel so far? Um, yeah, definitely. It's kind of hard, too, because some of my teammates would come from my neck, too, which you kind of got to realize it's racing. So uh, Martin in that last one, they, he did run into me a little bit. But I held my ground. I like kind of leaned into the turn. So it wasn't a big deal. It's racing. But uh, yeah, overall, it's just uh, the team. My teammates are good. You know, they're fast riders. They just I think they got to learn to pit it together a little more, which I mean, as I, I see that and that's stuff I got to learn from. So uh, yeah, but we got some fast guys on the team and I think they can pit it together. They're they're up there. Okay, is that it? No one else uh, out there? Anything? One more? Final one? We're good? Jason's all right? Lucas, you're good? No questions? Okay, just checking. All right, just making sure. All right, hey, give it up. Podium. First place, Hunter Lawrence, Max Anstey, Hayden Deegan. First podium of his career. Congratulations, gentlemen.